want to talk a little bit about sticky lips. Uh, this is a, a rough idea for uh, one option uh, of a way you could create sticky lips if you're using a joint driven rig. I've seen um, all kinds of great solutions using custom deformers and things like that, but um, I myself work in the game business so I, I pretty much have to think of creative ways to do things uh, entirely with joints. So this is one option and, and as you can see here, uh, well as you will see this is it's not uh, a very refined but it should give you the ideas you need to sit and and, uh, and tune this until you have a nice uh, sticky lip rig going. Um, so I've already set the scene up in the interest of saving some time but I'll explain kind of what's going on here and then I'll walk you through how I set this up. So. Uh, here we have the most amazing facial rig you've probably ever seen. Uh, I have three poly cubes and then a th another poly cube down here to represent the lower lip. So these are my upper lip areas and this is my lower lip. Uh, normally, you know, yeah, I mean, you might even break this into three pieces. But uh, I'm being lazy and I want a, a quick tutorial. I don't want to bore you guys to death. So, um, And you see here I have the sticky effect turned completely on. So what what basically is happening here is that you know these upper lip or the uh the, the bound mesh of the upper lip would just follow the joint and then when you got to a certain point you go ahead and you know release that sticky effect. And you see I had just a little fall off because what we might want is actually that the middle lip would uh come unstuck first and then the, the edges of the lip would come unstuck last. So I'll just return this guy back to zero here. So just to explain how I set this up, um, we have here three joints to represent my upper lip joints. Each one of these joints <coughs> I have uh, grouped uh, and then centered the pivot on that group. And this is actually the group I just selected right there. Uh, I do this so that I have a way of um, I can constrain the group rather than the joint. That leaves the joint free of any connection. So later on, I can go ahead and still be animating this. Is is you know like if this were an on the face sort of joint driven system or something like that. Um, big proponent of groups. I just add them for the heck of it because I I always end up needing them later. So uh, here I have a jaw joint, and this is what is rotating this this poly cube here. Uh, I then have a locator, and this is also grouped. I just use that group as sort of an adjuster later on if, if, if need be. And um, then I have another locator, and this is to represent the head locator. So this would always follow the head. This locator would always be following the jaw. Uh, what I've done then is I've selected the head locator, and then I actually select the joint group, not the joint itself, and then I drop down my constraint menu here. I do a parent constraint, but you just want to make sure in this case maintain offset is um, is turned on. And there's actually, you could probably even set this up with maintain offset turned off. You just have to be really accurate about where you uh, you know place these locators originally. And there might be some benefits to that, but you can explore that on your own. Uh, so uh, what I do is I, I go through each one of these joint groups and I do that parent constraint, right? And then when I'm done with that, I take this jaw locator and I do the same thing. And I go to each joint and I do that parent constraint. Effectively, at the end of this, what you have is a uh, parent constraint on each one of these joint groups. There. And here you see this represents the constraint to the head. This is the constraint to the jaw. Um, one means that it is completely constrained, zero means that it's not constrained at all. So in this case right now, what you're seeing is that uh, that group follows my head locator 100%. Right? And then when I, took my, uh, when I take my animation slider here and I slide it all the way up, select that constraint again, and now you see it's following the jaw 100%. And then we can go in between there, of course, and you'll get you know, sort of a mix of values. Um, 
Right. So we did our parent constraints. Uh, the next thing I did for this particular rig is uh, I have a control object here. I parent constrain the uh, the joint to the control object, and on the control object, I made a couple of uh, attributes. Here we see sticky one and sticky two, and the reason I did this is so that I can use sticky one to drive just this middle joint and sticky two to drive these corner joints here. I might have said that backwards. I'm, I'm, I don't recall how I set this up last night. So, um, so to do that, we are going to well first we'll select our jaw control. We'll modify or go to the modify menu. Let's try to drop this down here. Oh my! Okay. There we go. Um, go to modify menu and add attribute. And what we're going to create is a attribute called sticky bun. And we're going to make that a float. We're going to make the minimum value 0, the maximum value 1, and the default value 0. Uh, 